My name is Stephen Kelman. Today I'd like to chat to you a bit more about working with modular document and grid systems for both InDesign and Illustrator. Now for this demonstration I'll be using A3 presentation grid system uh, I made for Adobe InDesign. This includes a modular grid, uh, a 12 point document grid, a 12 point baseline grid, comprehensive style sheets for both light and dark text and a number of layout examples for both the cover covers and internal pages. I'm also going to include the Indes additional InDesign and Illustrator grid systems we're going to be creating today. Now you can purchase this uh, layout from the links below the video. Now obviously a document grid can be very useful uh, when working with simple vector graphics directly into InDesign. You know it can provide a guide for logo lockups or you know obviously it's useful for designing charts and tables. I mean there's loads of reasons why working with a document grid is very useful in directly in InDesign itself. Now one thing I find very useful is being able to work with separate linked InDesign files. You know, this is handy for just simple organisation or even collaborating with other designers or colleagues. Uh, it also keeps InDesign from slowing if you've got more complex documents. Uh, obviously you can just link to one individual file with that complex complexity and then that, slows, that stops you from slowing down your main job. Now w the thing that I want to show you today is how you can maintain a common uh, document grid and modular grid while linking to separate files. So let's go ahead and create a new page. Now you'll notice here our content area is 1080 by 720. So let's go ahead and change that in our page tool, 1080 by 720. Let's change our margins to zero. And we're gonna gutter zero again. Now, we still have guides, so we click Command Shift. Oh, let's unlock our guides. Command Shift to delete our guides. And then we go to Layout, Create Guides, and we're just creating our modular grid again. So that's rows, we want six. And then that's us. Oh, you'll notice we still have our document grid with its origin, uh, not at the top right hand at the top left hand corner. So all we do is we go to the top left hand corner of our page of our window and then we drag out the origin of our document grid again, just to the top left. So then you'll notice we're all lining up. So our columns are lining up and our rows are lining up with our document grid. Now that we've got that, all we would do would be to isolate that page and then save it out. So if I just delete, just come out of this now, uh, I've just called this A3 margins grid. So this is just the, the grid system from the previous file, but just the interior inside the margins. So we've got our uh, six by six document and modular grid. So, what we can do now, which is interesting, is we can just say if we wanted to go ahead and draw some graphics into this separate file. Let's save that now. And let's go back to our 
original document. If we start a new page there, we can go into uh, that margins grid that we just created with the diagonal pattern there. Make sure that page box is selected and we can go in and we can drag and drop there. And you'll notice that's us working with the same structure, the same document grid, the same modular grid, but we're able to link to it from a separate file. Now you could also do this for uh, separate pages. So you could just go Command D, select the file again, margins grid, and then all you would do would be change the, the page number. Now, obviously there's a lot of potential here in terms of uh, increasing your design workflow. Say if you are uh, designing a brand identity pre presentation, something like that, you could separate uh, your sections out if you're working with uh, another designer, something like that, or uh, you're duplicating content from elsewhere, you can bring it in and everything's going to line up uh, and have consistency with your document your docu document grid and modular grid. So it's be very useful once you get, get the hang of it. Now, in addition to being able to link to separate InDesign files with your modular and document grids set up, uh, one thing that's incredibly useful is being able to work with you know, corresponding Illustrator files and link to them while maintaining your modular uh, document grids. You know, in addition to the usual kind of benefits of organization, collaboration, um, uh, processing, you know, it, it keeps your InDesign file from slowing down. Um, you also get the added functionality that comes with Illustrator, you know, for more complex graphics and illustrations, things like that. Now, similar to InDesign, we can create our separate Illustrator file with just our content area. So again, our content area in this job is 1080 by 720. So I've set one up here. So you'll notice this document is 1080 wide by uh, 1080 wide by 720. And we have already have our document grid at 12 point. But if you wanted to change that, it'd be preferences, guides and grid. Now, I already have my modular grid set up. Uh, when you are creating your modular grid, you want to make sure the snap to grid tool is selected. And make sure your artboard tool is selected when drawing your guides. This means that your guides only apply to the artboard and not to that entire pasteboard. Because of this, if we go to, if we make sure our goods and guides are unlocked, we can then go to our artboard tool again, select all, and then duplicate our artboard. So what we can now do, if we wanted to, we could draw graphics. We could have multiple artboards with different graphics on them. And then link to them from our in design document. So let's go ahead and draw a couple of new pages. So we'll command D to place our Illustrator files in there. Let's make sure show import options is selected. Make sure we are cropping to our crop box. And we've got page one here. Uh, 
that's us. So that's page one again, like the InDesign example. You know, it's, that's us. We're all aligning pixel perfect to our InDesign uh, modular document grid. And if we wanted to work with the second page on our uh, Illustrator file, the second artboard on our Illustrator file, we can then go in and select artboard number two. That's it for now. Uh, if you found this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe. Uh, and remember, you can purchase these files from the link below the video. Thanks again.